Mycelium is growing in my living room. I write this after a long walk in the woods, a day after heavy rain. As I walk, below my feet, under the ground surface, runs a connecting white mass of infinitely renewable threads of hyphae, forming the vegetative portion and root-like structure of fungi called mycelium. Attaching itself to root systems, creating a symbiotic relationship that is the groundwork of a working ecosystem, bringing sustenance to all living species and is a literal world wide web. Sporadic communities of fruit of fungi that most of us just know as mushrooms reveal themselves to those who wish to look. The forest engulfed in a smell of damp vegetation and soil, a smell I thought to be the woods and what I now know to be mycelium. If I'm to tell you the story of a design student becoming a material designer, growing oyster mushroom mycelium and weak composite materials in her living room, I must first tell you the role of mycelium in the world, both past and future. Mycelium is nature's nutrient supplier and mortician. Mycrosia expanding the extensive root system surface area, connecting it with the soil to exchange water and minerals to plants, providing greater amounts of nutrients. Fungi also does a dirty job of decomposing living matter, digesting the organisms, extracting nutrients, returning it back to the ground and other plants, creating the infinite circular loop of life. Fungi has been performing these roles for billions of years. In recent years, we have deployed a new job utilizing fungi, unlocking its potential as a product material. Its ability to digest some of the hardest materials like lignin and cellulose, whilst creating strong connected tissue that forms a solid mass, has lent itself well to the expanding world of biomaterials. Modern companies like Ecovative, Microworks, Biome and Bolt Thread have all harnessed the power of the root-like structure mycelium. Mycelium is grown on sawdust or agricultural waste. They form a thick mat that can then be treated to resemble leather or create composite structures to make furniture and even building structures, all using a variety of different fungi from reishi to oyster mushrooms. Anna Lauren Hout Singh in her book, The Mushroom of the End of the World, looks at nature in three ways. First nature, which is the ecological relations. Second nature, the capitalist transformation of the environment. And third nature, that lives despite capitalism. She goes on to write about third nature, but I see this story of material experimentation and development being positioned in second nature, as we look to nature to transform our capitalist structures and use it to produce new products that are shifting the way we view the value of goods and also Mother Earth. I think it's time to tell you about the design student come self-proclaimed material designer, who for the past five months has dedicated herself time and life to developing her particular type of mycelium composite material. Her pursuit morphed into intrigue and obsession for the potential of nature and post-consumer waste, looking at how she could start at the very beginning of the design process, materials. She looked to her predecessors and fellow material designers to see what they had made. From the use of coffee grounds, citrus skins, wheat bran and all sorts of other materials that you and I would probably not see as usable. She too saw their potential. The forgotten and undesirables. For her this was agriculture. The earth is populated with row after row of ploughed crops growing to feed us through primary or secondary consumption. Year after year, depleting the land, leaving it arid with endless crop residue produced due to the deemed useless or only applicable for feedstock part of the crop. Agriculture has been under the microscope of many environmentalists, looking at land depletion, deforestation, chemical runoff, but often not waste production. Her years in Europe driving past endless fields of wheat, rapeseed and corn were stamped in her mind. These images of beauty without substance, no true understanding of the world below the rows of crops and behind the curtains of commercial farming. What part of the crop is not used? What happens to it? Can I use it? What can be done with it? Before her world was engulfed by oyster mushroom substrate, the no longer commercially viable mushroom feed, in this case, wheat straw and mycelium fibres interwoven throughout the block, her exploration started with wheat straw and finding another practical application for this agricultural byproduct that is often just seen as waste. What is it for farmers to see it as more? 
to see it as a commodity that has value. And wheat. What better material to look at for agricultural waste than the crop that birthed agriculture, defined modern civilizations, and is still one of the biggest global agricultural industries, as it is a staple crop for many diets. She thought it'd be easy to break down wheat, that it would just blitz or soften on water. No, from first experimentation, she discovered wheat is tough, the cellulose and lignin creating strong bonds that only break down under certain conditions. This is what makes it have the potential to be a great biomaterial, but also difficult to work with. She instantly thought that wheat could be used to create paper, yarn, clay composites or be woven focusing her attention on the long fibres that run down the wheat straw and the opportunity for yarn, boiling it, stripping it and hand spinning it to create variations of finely bound semi-strong yarn that can then be crocheted, weaved or knitted. Her pursuit and desire for a sustainable thriving future that she could positively contribute to and her constant grappling with the implications of her design in relation to consumerism pushed her to fight for change in the only way she knew how design. She knew her words would not change the minds of the masses, but thought if she could create accessible tangible products and material alternatives that she could show that there are better options. This could be seen as the wishful thinking of a student, but change comes from those with dreams and passion. The young leading the charge in the fight to save the world from the current climate crisis. Sourcing responsibly changed her course of action, leading her straight to the mushroom lady an artisan oyster mushroom farmer based in Kent, sparking a collaborative relationship between them. The mushroom lady continued to provide her with substrate that went on to engulf the student's research and material focus, becoming the mycelium composite she is developing. I must remind you, she started off very naive, having never worked with the development of a material before, setting out to teach herself everything, all from her living room. No labs, no fancy equipment or expert guidance, just her and the material she was working with. She received preliminary information from the mushroom lady that set her off for exploration, but her process was a practical one, thinking about what is the texture, what does it do, will it dry, is it strong? When she first got her hands on the material, she was shocked by how broken down it was. It was like pulped paper with some full wheat straw scattered through. It was moldable, it held its shape. It is what she'd been trying to achieve in previous experiments to break down the wheat, but instead it was done for her by this living organism that was externally digesting the wheat, creating strong mycelium bonds that held the material together. She instantly knew she was scrapping her previous experiments and pursuing the oyster mushroom substrate. The repetitive daily practice all revolved around her living room, a far cry from the damp subtropical forestry that oyster mushrooms thrive in. Her kitchen is a homemade laboratory where she prepares her materials. Under her dining room table, a cardboard box that provides the perfect dark environment to grow the mycelium composite. And the dining room table, covered in samples and experiments, becoming a place of analysis, reflection and extensive note taking, cataloguing the smell, grow time, texture, structure, appearance and how it reacts over time. Her process involved preparing containers, trialing cardboard, silicon, with holes or without holes. She moulded the substrate, sometimes adding coffee, different flowers like buckwheat or oat flour, whatever she already had in her flat. Every experiment different, trialing and testing alternative methods. She grew for a couple of days, for weeks, sometimes she skipped steps or added them. Every day making, checking, note taking subtly altering her method, eliminating steps or techniques that didn't work until she got to her current method of mycelium wheat composite material making. Method of oyster mushroom mycelium and wheat composite material. One, sanitation. Preparing the equipment, washing the containers and then sanitizing with disinfectant or rubbing alcohol. Wipe down the surface of the container. Two, molding materials and first grow. Wearing gloves, break up the substrate mixture into small pieces. At this stage, you could add food additives. These include coffee grounds, different flowers, or extra wheat. Place the substrate into the moulds, lightly compacting the substrate so that it is slightly formed together. Place the containers with substrate into a dark, slightly warm environment for up to 7 to 14 days or until a camembert-like coating covers the exterior of the material block. 
Three, material transfer. Once the substrate has developed an even mycelium coating, transfer the material into a sanitized air seal container and place back into a dark space. Leave the material for up to seven days. Four, drying. Remove the material from the container and follow either drying method. A, air drying. Place the material on a drying rack in a well-ventilated room and leave to dry until there is no spring when compressed and the material feels dry to touch. B, compression. Compress the materials using clamps and two flat sheets. Evenly and gradually compress the material until no longer able to be compressed. Leave compressed for up to 10 minutes and then remove from compression. Leave it to dry on a drying rack until no spring when compressed and the material feels dry to touch. She intends to continue the daily repetitive process, establishing it as a process of design, evolving the material method to produce the best and most efficient material. She knows that she must move out of her living room and design studio, finding a better home for the material development exploration in a laboratory, conducting controlled tests and determining the nuances that affect the growing process. Her experimentation process is also fueled by academic research and deeper biological understanding of mycelium, allowing her to manipulate the mycelium to grow faster and have stronger bonds. She came to know the material almost inside and out. Through initial observations and touch, she could tell if the substrate was old or young, fruited once or twice, if the mycelium was strong and would grow, the material changing every day. Her daily activity of making new experiments meant that she could feel it age and grow. Mycelium fibers becoming more dense and the substrate harder. She knows when a batch is of different quality, altering production method, producing different strength and structure qualities of the composite. She has received some bad batches that are dry, barely broken down and difficult to grow, taking four times what she is used to. It is infuriating for her to have the material not work in the way that she has come to know it, having to look to new approaches and ways of caring and preparing the substrate. This illustrated to her that she is at a point where she needs to be working in a laboratory and with controlled, consistent variables. She also needs a better understanding of how the raw material substrate is formed in the farm. What are the environmental factors? Moisture, light, and temperature. Failures define her success. No failure was a true failure as it built her knowledge. She is still running into some as I write this. Mold, however hypnotic she finds it, the green speckled gems embedding themselves on the surface of her samples were a barrier that left her puzzled and at war with the growing method. She wishes to explore it further, but that is a whole nother rabbit hole. Therefore, for now, she is just conducting temporary solutions. Her first battle was killing the mycelium so that it wouldn't grow into the user's wooden furniture. She tried baking it, but found the mycelium to be persistent, long fibers growing from her sample surface. She tried baking it at high temps, low and slow, twice, three times, until she tried compression, suffocating the mycelium, killing it, and naturally drying up the blocks. Something she found out by chance, influenced by extensive testing, but still an accident or just why not attitude, leading her to realize that the composite dries out on its own just over a longer period of time. The blocks shrivel up, collapsing and creating irregular shapes. She defines herself as a material designer. This is not to be confused with a material scientist. They are two fields that hover around one another, but their approaches and outlooks are quite different. A designer approaches materials in a practical and physical way, whilst looking at the wider world, seeking to find solutions, considering the wider implications of the material, the production, sourcing and application, establishing the material qualities, not just the physical properties. A material scientist looks at the chemical composition and has scientific training working in controlled laboratories. She seeks to continue to find material applications for agricultural byproducts, progressing her approach to materials and development process. She tried laser cutting, hand sawing, carving, drilling, realizing that it all goes against the beauty and nature of mycelium. It grows. It is a slow process, a large part out of the control of the user. It will form into any determined shape, and when you're done, it will decompose, leaving only nutrients behind for the circular loop. I should tell you, the mycelium composite is pretty cool. 
It's buoyant, fire resistant, self extinguishing, and biodegradable whilst being strong. It is something in between MDF and chipboard. It could be used for plant pots, dry vases, cremation vessels, and even furniture. The materials are only at a middle point of development. These speculations will turn into real applications through further prototyping and testing. She shares her developing material method to fellow biomaterial and mushroom enthusiasts seeking collaboration, seeing value in open sourcing. Novices and material practitioners grow the material in different environments, loosely following her method whilst creating their own, evolving the mycelium wheat composite together but remotely. I'm a member of her club, the Mycelium Club, where she allows me to grow my own mycelium samples. Sharing with me her method and providing me with a variety of mixtures in order to see how they all grow differently. I was one of those people just intrigued by biomaterials, no knowledge and no intent to do the work to perfecting it, but she let me see the opportunities that arise when using mycelium, making me want to now grow more than just sample tiles and implementing it into my design process. Making moulds that the mycelium wheat composite can grow in, possibly making furniture or growing the blocks together. I feel opportunities have opened up for me through seeing the possibilities to make with more than just conventional materials like wood, metal, clay and plastic. She created a place for exploration, encouraging others to participate, seeking to expand the material and the mycelium club. A display wall was made to showcase experimentation, her progression in the material development whilst also allowing others to showcase her own mycelium composite. It's a tool to engage and demonstrate the material to more people. A revolving cycle of materials are displayed as people make their own samples and the material develops further, showcasing the most up-to-date and interesting iterations of the mycelium wheat composite. I joined her club by seeing this wall, taking her method pamphlet and contacting her to start growing my own mycelium composite. There were group Zoom meetings and check-ins, creating a real community of us ragtag team of mycelium enthusiasts and amateur material designers. Now my material sample was displayed on her wall in her studio for more to see and join. Her material development and practice are still growing, slowly and under control in environments and parameters not too dissimilar to her mycelium wheat composite. Recognising that she is just the beginning stage of the growth process, it will change. The method shared in the mycelium club and with her display wall will be different until there is no need for a display wall, as you will be sitting on a chair made of the mycelium wheat composite admiring the next biomaterial exploration.